Eternal God will give you all the praise for the preparation made already. We thank you because your holy angels are mightily present now. We thank you for that key. The key to the resources of life. The key to the victory of life. That you have made available for us. Which we are not just going to receive and keep somewhere. But we shall be put to use from now onward. Father, we call upon you tonight and pray that every brother, every sister, every man, every child present here will receive the touch of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Speak to us now, O Lord. Use this mouth of clay, Father, to bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 It's nice to be back in the house of the Lord. We've been here since yesterday, feeding at the feet of the Master. Looking at the different and diverse ways that the closed doors of our lives can be opened. And I am here to let you know that any door that might have been closed against you, no matter for how long it has been closed, no matter who is responsible for the closure, the power of the living God is present tonight. Amen. To let open every door of blessing in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. And if the door of your life a particular door that's supposed to be closed has been opened. Because there are some doors that needed to close in our lives in order for another door to open. Every door that ought to be closed, which are currently opened, Holy Ghost will shut them up in Jesus' name. This is what I'm talking about. I am saying that the door of infirmity in your life from tonight shall be closed in Jesus' name. Yeah. I am saying that the door of death shall be closed in Jesus' name. Yeah. I am saying that the door of stagnation shall be shut completely in Jesus' name. Yeah. Tonight we are talking about keys that unlock doors. Keys that unlock doors. Now, if you look at the topic, we're talking about more than just one key. And you need to understand that in different parts of your house, you have different rooms and you have different locks. And there are parts of your house that is only reserved for certain people. And there are other parts that some people can get into. But as the owner of the house, you have the freedom, the liberty, to get to any part of your house without any restraint, without any limitation. So, when we not talk about door, we need to understand the essence of door. Doors are meant for protection. Doors are meant for security. Doors are meant for safety. You put door in a house, either to prevent somebody from going out or somebody from coming in. At the same time, you use the same door to give access to somebody either to get out or to come in. And so it serves both purposes. It now depends on what you need the door for. Whatsoever you need the door of your life for. Heaven will give you the power for it in Jesus' name. Every good door has a lock. Did you hear what I said? Every good door has a lock. And lock is never created for any other thing than for the door. But there are times that the locks have been wrongly used. Every lock that has been used against you will be reversed in Jesus' name. 
There is an interesting passage in the scripture that deals with these subjects. And I'm looking at Matthew chapter 16, looking at it from the 13th verse. And we just look at it one after the other. Matthew chapter 16 verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say, Thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets, he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Listen to me. We're still going to continue the reading from verse 16. But it is one thing for people around you to say that Christ is this. Christ is that. You need to personally know in your life who is Christ unto you. Until you come to that realization, you have not known him. Until you come to that knowledge of who Christ is in your life. Of your relationship with him. Of the connection you have with him. Of what he can do for you. And what you can do to him. You have not known him. Who do men say that I am? Yes, they said this, they said that. But the question is, who do you say that Christ is? In your life. Is he your savior? Is he your redeemer? Is he the hope of your life? Is he your healer? Is he your protection? Is he your sustainer? Who is Christ unto you? Is he your guide? Is he your leader? Or somebody else? Who is Christ unto you? Whom say ye that I am? Verse 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. Hallelujah. Thou art the Christ. Christ uh, Peter was saying that Jesus was the Christ. Jesus was the savior of the world. That means in any situation you find yourself, in any condition you find yourself, Christ Jesus is more than enough. I said it's more than enough. I said it's more than enough. I do know that some people add water to Jesus. Some add oil to Jesus. Some add candle to Jesus. Some add all kinds of cloth to Jesus. But the Bible says that Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. His name has never changed. His power has never changed. His word has never changed. And that Jesus is present here tonight in Jesus' name. The 17, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys. Can you see that word? Everybody say keys. Everybody say keys. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever. And whatsoever. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Somebody didn't hear that. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Here we see the Lord Jesus Christ telling Peter, and not Peter alone, but the rest of the apostles as well, that upon the foundation of the truth that Peter has just said or spoken, the church of Christ shall be built. Now, I'm going somewhere. He said, I will build my church. I will build my church. Now, if you don't understand the concept of the word church, you're going to miss what Christ is saying there. But I will come back to that later on. But then, he said, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom. Now, when you have a kingdom, pay attention please. You have more than one room. 
When you have a kingdom, you have more than one house. When you have a kingdom, you have more than one street. It is a kingdom. Listen to this. And the Bible says, you shall be given the keys of the kingdom. That means every aspect of the kingdom, you have access to every key, to every part of that kingdom. What an awesome promise from the king of glory. What an awesome promise unto you. He said, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom. But before he talked about the key, he talked about his church. He talked about building his church. So maybe we should look at that church first. And then we come back to the key. When Christ talked about the church, he wasn't really talking about the blocks and bricks of wood that we put together that we call a structure. No. Christ wasn't talking about that. When Christ talked about the church, when he said, I will build my church, he was talking about you. I said he was talking about you. He was talking about you. Christ said he's going to build you up. Every part of your life that has been collapsed, Christ is saying there is hope for you. Christ is saying that no matter what may be going on in your life right now, no matter what might have happened in your life in the past, he's saying that your past will not determine your future. He's saying that what you are going through right now will not determine your future. Because he said, I have a job to do. I will build my church. That, that means Christ was talking about individual people, members of the church. Members of the church. Members of the church. Amen. 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 Coincidentally, fortunately, I don't like to say unfortunately. Amen. Because there is nothing unfortunate around me. How about you? I said there is nothing unfortunate around me. Everything about me is fortunate. Praise the Lord. A few weeks ago, I was in one of our church. And coincidentally, I turned on this verse. I will build my church. That was the topic. I will build my church. And by the time it was all over, all over, because I'm not really talking about building church now. I'm talking about doors and keys. So I won't go too deep into it. And then I told them that anything going on in your life, in your body, in your marriage and everything, Jesus said he will build it all. He said he will build it all. He said he will build it all. And there, there was a brother in the church that very day. That very day. And I saw him today. At the end of the service, I didn't know. During the prayer time, this is just about two or three weeks ago, he came out. Nobody asked for testimony or anything, but he just got so blessed. He came out and he said, before his eyes were cloudy. But while the prayer was going on, something happened. And everything became very, very clear. Anything in your life that needed to be built up, the same Jesus is here to do it today in Jesus' name. He said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom. And then whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bind in heaven. And whatsoever you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Revelation chapter 3 verse 8. Revelation chapter 3. I'm looking at the eighth verse there. There the Bible says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Open door. And no man, everybody say no man. Everybody say no man. Can shut it. It says, for thou hast a little stand. And hast kept my word. And has not denied my name. Listen to this. It doesn't matter the level of your strength. You are not alone. You are working with Jesus. I say you are collaborating with Jesus. You are in partnership with Jesus. And he doesn't need your strength to get anything accomplished. He's more than enough. He's more than enough. All he just wants to do is just to showcase you. Help me showcase you in Jesus' name. And so here... Jesus is speaking, and he said, before you is an open door. Open door of ministry. Open door of healing. Open door of salvation. 
open up purity, open up righteousness, open up uprightness. Some people will say, well, this Christian life, I don't understand. Once the door is set open before you, no devil, no demon, no principality of power shall be able to shut it in Jesus' name. There is an access to anything and everything that you need in life. And I want to tell you, sometimes we talk about master key. But listen, there is no master key without other pieces of keys. Did you get that? There is only a master key because there are other keys. And those keys are given to people. When we talk of keys, they have their limitations. The one key can open here, it cannot open another place. There are keys that are only for set time. That is, it's not the kind of key you can use every day, every time. But just for specific period of time. In our church, we have the place where we keep keys. And the, 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 the building manager, whenever he wants to let somebody in, he gives you the code. That code is for a period of time. After that time, if you say, well, because I got the key, I went in, and then you went back there again, you cannot get in again. Amen? Because it's not an access for all time. But we are talking of this key that is useful today, useful tomorrow, useful next month, and for the rest of your life, the key that will never fail you in Jesus' name. We're going to talk about three things. Countless keys for diverse doors. Countless keys for diverse doors. Remember that you have the key to your car. If you have Honda and Toyota, the key you use for one will not open the other one. There is time for everything. And there are things that fit everything. Or certain things rather. And so, we are going to look at these diverse keys we are talking about. The Bible tells us that God has given unto us. All that pertains unto life and the godliness in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Remember that the word of God is the number one key that you need. The devil came to tempt the Lord Jesus. And what did Jesus use against him? The word of God. The word of God. The word of God. Use that word. Use that word. The knowledge of that word will take you to places. The knowledge of what the word can accomplish in your life will take you to places. The word of God. You know, God took Ezekiel. In Ezekiel chapter 37, looking at it from the first verse, God took him to a particular place that is called a valley. The valley of dry bones. Valley of dry bones. And may I serve you a notice right now. If your life currently is like that dry bone, life is coming your way in Jesus' name. And the Lord told Ezekiel, son of man, look at all these dry bones. Look at their condition and their situation. Can they live again? That's one. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me up down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. And caused me to pass by them. Round about and behold. There were many in the open valley. And lo they were very dry. And said unto me son of man. Can this both live? And I said O Lord God. Thou knowest. Again he said unto me. Prophesy unto these bones. And say unto them. O ye dry bones hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God, unto these bones, behold, I will cause bread to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinus upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, the shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Now, go back to verse 5, which is where I'm really going. It says, God sees the Lord, the word of God. God sees the Lord. Whatever the Lord has said will never, never fail. I said, will never, never fail. No matter the situation, 
no matter the condition, if God says this, hold on to it. No matter the storm, no matter the wind, hold on to it, and you'll see that God never failed in Jesus' name. Verse 7, verse 7, So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, the shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Everything about your life that has been shattered, the Lord will bring them together in Jesus' name. The word of the Lord. Another thing you need is salvation. We know about salvation through the word of God. As a matter of fact, God said he exalts his word above his name. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus asked the disciples, Who do people say that I am? And then he turned to them and said, Who do you say that I am? Who is Christ Jesus unto you? He came to the world to die for you. Any key we may be talking about, will never be effective, will never be useful without encounter with Christ Jesus. You must be born again. You must be born of the spirit and of the water. You must have a new life. You must be changed, be born two times. Many have been in the church for years. And because they've been in the church for so many years, they know the rules and the regulations of the church. They know the do's and don'ts of the church. And before long, we begin to call them brother and sister. But in reality, they are not members of the church. Your name may be there in the church record. You may even be a worker in the church. Except you are genuinely, sincerely, honestly born again. You have nothing to do with Christ. You know, when I go to places... And after ministering, I tell people to close their eyes before I make altar call. You know the reason why I do that? Is to give everybody equal opportunity. And to God's glory, I've been to places where key workers in the church suddenly realize that in reality, they have not been born again. And they have to give their life to Christ. I was at a particular church. This is not a deeper life now. I was invited to minister, and all that people were to minister also. And the person that ministered before me I said all that uh, needed to be said by her. She's a lady. And people were jumping and clamping and everything. You know the way we get emotional. And uh, I was to come up to her. And I took over, and I ministered the topic I was giving. By the time it was all over, I gave an altar call unto God's glory. And I said, this is not about healing. This is not about miracle. This is not about signs and wonders. This is about your soul. You must be born again. And to cut a long story short, of all those that gave their life to Christ in that place that very night, that minister, that just finished ministry was the first to raise up her hand and said, I'm ready to be saved. Salvation is not something you can buy from the market. Salvation is not something you can make up. You may have knowledge of the church. You may even know the scripture. The devil also knows the scripture. If you don't have this key of salvation, which will open the first door for you, the first door into the remember Jesus said the keys of the kingdom. It is when you become born again that you enter into the family of God. Without salvation, you don't know how the Christian life looks like. Without salvation, you will continue to think it is not possible to live above sin. Without salvation, you'll be struggling and trying on your own by yourself, and yet the arm of the flesh will fail you. You may know how to preach. And I think I told you here before. I, used, I have been used to preaching before God eventually saved me. And so I know the difference between religion and righteousness. You may be an usher in the church. You may be a singer in the church. 
Maybe you are in one of our locations. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The number one key that you need in your life. To be a member of the family of God and to have access to all that God has gotten in stock for every one of his children. If you are not born again, it doesn't matter for how long you pray. Some like to prolong prayers. Some like to fast along. Some like to do all kinds of things. But listen to this. Except a man be born again, he cannot see. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. Remember? What kind of keys did Jesus say he's going to give? The keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom. And except you are born again. John chapter 3 verse 3. John chapter 3 verse 3. So that we all know it, but let's look at it again. Verse 3 there says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I see unto thee, except a man be born again is a condition. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You can't see doctors of entering there. I pray you will enter therein in Jesus' name. Another key that you need is the key of knowledge. The Bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. Do you know there are people that are sincerely born again? They are genuinely born again, but they are still under the affliction of the enemy. They are still under torment. They are still being tossed to and fro because they lack knowledge. They lack the knowledge of who they are in Christ Jesus. They lack the knowledge of their position in Christ. They lack the knowledge of their power in Christ. They lack the knowledge of the authority that is vested upon them by virtue of sonship in the family of God. Lack of knowledge. And that is why, even though the disciples have been with Jesus for quite some time, he still needed to know from them, who do you think I am? Yes, they saw the miracles. Yes, they saw the signs and wonders. But who do you say that I am? And until you are able to answer that question for yourself, you will never be able to move forward. You need the knowledge of the word of God. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. I look at it again. Looking at it from verse 13. But I will just quickly jump to verse 15. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Christ wanted to know the level and the limit of their knowledge concerning him. Do you know there are people that believe that Jesus can save, but they do not believe that Jesus can heal. They believe that Jesus can say, but they do not know that Jesus can take away their sorrow. They believe that Jesus can heal, but they do not believe he can do it for them. Yes, for others, yes. They can encourage others. They can motivate others. But when it comes to them, they don't think that that same Christ can do it for them. Knowledge. Knowledge of what Christ will do. What Christ can do. And uh, he will do wonders in your life. In Jesus name. We need the key of deliverance. The key of deliverance. The Bible tells us. In, in the book of Luke. Chapter 1. Looking at it from verse 73. This is amazing. And if you have this knowledge. You are free. You are free. It says, the oath which is read to our fathers Abraham, that he will grant unto us, that we might be, what's the next word? Delivered. 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 Delivered from attacks, from affliction, from torment, from problems, from trouble. Delivered out of the hand of our enemies. And that we might serve him without fear. In holiness. Some are not able to live holy life. Because of fear. Fear of the past. Fear of the present. Fear of the future. Fear of the unknown. Because of fear. It says that we may serve him without fear. In holiness and righteousness. Before him. For how long? All the days of our life. All the days of our life. All the days of our life. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Luke 
chapter 4, the key of deliverance. The key of deliverance. Verse 18 says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach, was the next word? Deliverance. To preach deliverance. You know, some people, they tell you that it's nothing like deliverance. To preach deliverance to the captives. To the captives. And recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And so, we need the key of deliverance. And if God says we need it, then we better go for it. And as you go for it, you will get it in Jesus' name. We need a key of prosperity. Amen? I know some believers are contented with where they are, with what they have. But my Bible says that if I give up anything and everything, I will recover everything here on earth. The word of the Lord is telling me that I don't have to suffer on earth and then wait till I get to heaven before enjoyment. The day you gave your life to Christ, there is a package made for you. I said there is a package made for you. And everything you need are all there in the package. All you need is just go to, go to the package. And then get whatsoever you need for yourself. For yourself, prosperity is part of what is contained in your package. If you are in debt, there is a key that can get you out of debt. You remember? Jesus was with the disciples. They needed money to pay tax. And there was no money. It's not strange that you don't have money. But it will be strange for you not to be able to pay money into your life. Amen? And Jesus said, Peter, you used to be a fisherman, right? Go to the riverside, catch fish. The money is right there. Prosperity, prosperity. If you don't know how to come by, just pray, Lord, show me the way. Because he said, he has given you all that pertains unto life and godliness. But as I talked about prosperity, you know, some don't understand how it happens. They have worked and worked. They have labored and labored. And they said, I can't see the money. You will never see the money until you understand the secret of getting the money. The secret of prosperity. The key here is giving. Everybody say give. Everybody say give. You know, one thing that many of us in deeper life have problem with is not holiness. It's not righteousness. It's not uprightness. It is giving. And that's why many are still poor. But you will be delivered from poverty tonight in Jesus' name. When God tells you to give, He's giving you an opportunity so you can be blessed. When God tells you to give, whether in your church or to help somebody, when God tells you to give, all He's doing is He's wanting you to sow so that you can reap. He has harvest in mind. But some don't understand. And please listen to me. When we talk of giving, it's not only money you give, but you need to give money. You give your time. Some may think, well, the time is not there. Well, you have to create it. Because every time you give, we will pay back unto you in many forms. You give your talents. You give your treasure. Everything that you have, you give unto the Lord. And you continue to give and see. The Bible says that you try me and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing in such a way that there will not be no room to receive it. If you really want to prosper, you want to have money, learn to begin to give. Learn to begin to give. And you'll be amazed what the Lord will do in Jesus' name. Let me share this testimony with you. Sometimes early this month, we decided to start some new locations. And after the little we have in our location, we gave some people and said, you go, go start. You go, go start. You go, go start. And to some people, it's like, isn't this foolishness? We have not filled up this place, and pastor is planting more churches. 
Well, we started that, we did that in March. And to God's glory, I can tell you that right now, everybody we gave out have been fully recovered back. And much more. But before we gave, we have plateaued. We have just been dancing between the same number. We go a little bit, we come down. Go a little bit, come down. But after we gave, heaven brought them back. I'm telling you so you can know that it's not only money you give. Whatever God wants you to give, just listen to his voice. Give and you'll see that key working for you in Jesus' name. Do you know some people don't understand what it means to give to God with praise and worship? The Bible says that God inhabits the praise of his people. And that's why many a times we will do praise worship and many of us are doing it sluggishly. I wonder what would have happened if David were to be here. Amen? That man really worshipped the Lord with everything possible and heaven recognized him. And the person that was trying to make a caricature of him got in trouble. Turn to someone and say, you will not get in trouble. Learn to praise the Lord with songs and psalms. Learn to praise him with music. With everything that you can, praise the name of the Lord. We need the key of prayer. You know, some people, they can fast, they can fast, they can fast. I want to tell you, yes, fasting is another key. But it has its own place. The Bible did not say fast without season. But the Bible, however, said pray without, pray without season. So you pray, and then you fast. But don't put your faith or confidence in your fasting. Put your faith in God and see what the Lord will do for you. I need to talk about the key of unity. Things are not happening in many places, in many homes and families, in many churches, in many organizations, because there is no oneness. Everybody is on their own. Somebody is pulling this way, and no one is pulling this way. There is no common voice. There is no united efforts. And yet the Bible says that if two of you shall agree together as touching anything, as touching anything, you'll be unlimited. I say you'll be unlimited. Matthew chapter 18, verses 19 and 20. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For we are two or three are gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst of them. Please pay attention here. I know many a times, and we do know that the name of Jesus is the strong tower. The righteous rose into it and is saved. We do know that the name has been given above all names. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every kneel shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. But listen to this. Many people have that name, and the name is not working for them. Why? A father pulled that says, prayer is the key. Yes, many have prayed, and their prayer has never gone beyond the ceiling. Why? The seven sons of uh, Sivas in Acts of the Apostle, they prayed and they called the name of Jesus, but instead of deliverance taking place, uh, oppression, affliction, and torment came upon them. They were driven out of the place. They mentioned the name of Jesus. Why? Some say the word of God, and they use the word of God, but then to no avail. And then they repeat and repeat again, and they say it again and again, and nothing happened. Why? Why is it that some of these keys are not working? There is something that is crucial. There is something that is important. That you and I need for every other key to work. That thing is called F-A-I-T-H. Somebody sound it out. 
Somebody sound it out. Somebody sound it out. You may know Jesus. If you have no faith in Jesus, nothing is going to happen. You may be able to pray. If you have no faith in your prayer, nothing is going to happen. You may be able to quote the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. If there is no faith in that thing, if, it's the, if it is not mixed with faith, it's not going to happen. Oh, somebody will quote from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. If you shall diligently, and I have it here, or oh, listen, or oh, hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and do according to all that is commanded therein, then shall you be blessed, and blessed shall thou be. Yes, that is true. But, do you know there are partial obedience? And there are perfect obedience. There are some obedience that is in place because of fear of judgment. But God is the one that knows at what point you really believe in him. You really trust him. And you are really acting on the basis of his word by faith. That is why we have been told in the book of James chapter 1 James chapter 1 if you don't if you don't mind turning your bible there with me we look at the sixth verse there James chapter 1 verse 6 but let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed everybody read verse 7 Verse 8. A double minded man is unstable in all his way. The Bible also made us to know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. No matter any other thing that we do, without faith, it is impossible to please God. If you hear the word of God, you don't believe, you have to believe unto salvation. You have to believe unto healing. You have to believe unto deliverance. If you don't believe in holy living, you can't live holy. You can't live, be, be pure and upright in your life. We need faith in our life in order to be able to move forward. That's why the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11. And look at it there. The exploit of faith. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And then he began to tell us, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Please wait here. I talk about being prosperous by giving and by making offering. People make offering, but not from the heart. Not by faith. Do you know that Cain also made an offer? What made the difference between the offering of Cain and the offering of Abel? The Bible tells us the difference is faith. All those that experience miracle here in this chapter is all by faith. And if you will believe tonight unto salvation, the doubts of your life will vanish away in Jesus' name. If you will believe unto healing, the infirmities in your body will vanish away in Jesus' name. You know another thing I like to talk about? That you still cannot do is a key but you can do it without faith. And that thing is forgiveness. Forgiveness is a key to your peace. It's a key to your joy. It's a key to your satisfaction. Listen, if anything happens between you and anybody, you know, some of us will sweep it under the carpet. And then we begin to use that, that into art and to react to one another. The bitterness is there. The anger is there. The animosity is there. Why don't you deal with it once and for all and let it go? Some don't like to deal with issues. 
and they hold on to it, it becomes their baby. They are nursing that baby. If you don't let that baby go, that baby is going to kill you. Let it go. Amen? Whether your brother likes it or not, confront the issue once and for all and put it behind you. Forgiveness will hinder your blessing. Forgi unforgiveness, rather, will hinder your blessing. Unforgiveness will hold you bound. If you keep you in captivity, even though you have the opportunity of being liberated. But you know, some don't believe that once somebody say, I am sorry, that the person is sincere about the apology. They don't believe. And they still hold on to that thing. They still hold on. And you're having heaviness in your heart. Don't die of hypertension. Give up that thing. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. When you have this key, when you have this key, what are the consequences of having it? Consequences of having the keys that unlocks. The consequences. Already, if you believe in God, truth unto salvation, you become a new creature. Therefore, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If you have this key, the Bible tells us in the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, it says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. You don't seek the things on this earth alone, your affection, your mind, your goal is heaven. When you have this key, nothing of this life will really matter unto you. When you have this key, you will be able to decree a thing and it will be established unto you. Behold, I will give unto the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom. You are there, and there is any kind of sickness in you. In place of sickness, strength, healing, and sound health will be your portion in Jesus' name. Keys that unlocks. Keys that unlocks. You have been there. When these keys are there in your life, and you know there has always been failure. Always been failure. And then you say, it is enough of failure. It is time for victory. It is time for success. And we've been told in the morning uh, that there are good successes and uh, uh, successes and bad uh, successes. And then you begin to experience uh, good successes. Successes. And then you begin to move from lack to abundance when you have this key that we are talking about. You have been stagnant in your life. There will be promotion when this key comes into your life. Because very easily you pick up the key and then you open and then off you are gone by the grace of God. Not that alone. The key will not be meant for just you alone. You become a channel of blessing unto other people. Because you have the knowledge of who Christ is in you. Because he's the, he's the hope of glory. You have the knowledge of what Christ can do through you. And then with the name of Jesus, you go to places and things begin to happen in your life in Jesus' name. It says this signs shall follow them that believe. But you've got to believe again before those signs will begin to follow you. Will begin to follow you. Will begin to follow you. And if you really, really want Christ to walk in you and on your behalf, it's not enough to be religious. It's not enough to be a member of the church. It's not enough to attend church regularly. Make sure you believe every letter in the word of God. In the word of God. In the word of God. And believe them unto your own salvation. When I use the word salvation, it begins with salvation from sin. I told you that the, the open door, the access, the access into the life of God, into the riches of God. That is the access. And then when you get in, you are able to get to every part of it. So this building has so many levels. To get to any part of the level, you need to come through the main door first. That's what salvation is all about. You can't get sanctified except you are saved. 
You can't have the Holy Spirit of God except you're saved. You can't be a true servant or minister of the, of the Lord except you're saved. You can't pray and God answer because the prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto the Lord. Except you are saved. Salvation is the open door. You must be born again. You must be born again. It's not by activity. I know some are very, very active in the church. It's not by emotion. I know some are very emotional. But you need to understand that once you come in, these keys will help and enhance your stability in the kingdom. And you will not fall in Jesus' name. I say you will not fall in Jesus' name. The key. The key is available. The key is available. The key is available. Let's open our Bible to Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. I look at verses 1 and 2 first. Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 and 2. And see what the Lord is saying. And the same time came, at the same time came, the disciples unto him saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? You want to be great? Listen to this. And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. Please pay attention here. Because we are talking about opening doors of excellence. Doors of progress. Doors of productivity. Doors of increase. Doors of success. Doors of promotion. Doors of abundant life. Doors of healing. Doors of deliverance. Who is the greatest in the kingdom of God? Verse 3. And Jesus having said, the little child said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be, what's the next word? Except you be converted. You want to be great? It begins with conversion. Except you be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not that alone. When you look at verse 4, it tells us, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself, as a little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Humility. Not that alone. I told you about forgiveness before. We'll find it again here in verse 15. I won't believe that. I told you about unity before. We'll find it in verse 18. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever ye, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Everybody read verse 20 for me. One, two, go. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, the Lord is there. Do you believe the Lord is here tonight? Do you believe the Lord is here tonight? Do you believe the Lord is here tonight? Whatever your need may be, He's here to meet those needs in Jesus' name. But you have a role to play before His own role will be played. You have to do your own part. You have to repent. You have to confess. You have to let it go. You have to make right your way. And then everything you need in life will come your way in Jesus' name. What else do we need to do? You have to ensure that on a daily basis you live a Christian life. It's not just being born again once. It's not once saved, forever saved. No. It's a constant daily Christian living. If you be risen with Christ, you seek those things which are above every day of your life. Not once in a while. Not why you are in the church. Whether in the church or outside of the church. You live for God on a daily basis. That is when you can have doors open for you in your life. And then you pray from time to time. The power of prayer. I told you earlier on, there are times that you might need to just add fasting to your prayer. Add fasting. Matthew chapter 17 verse 21. Matthew 17 verse 21. 
we are trying to round up, but let's look at this. How be it? This kind goeth not out, but by what? Please pay attention here. The Lord is saying you pray always. You don't have to fast always. But listen. There are certain situations in your life that requires fasting. Not traditional fasting. Not religious fasting. Not seasonal fasting. But a deliberate fasting. Deliberate fasting. I will share something with you. I've shared it with some people before. There were times in my life that I was going through some challenges. And because of my background, I was used to fasting every week. Every week. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I don't miss it. And even before that time, the one they call Lent. Yes, I love it also. And so, when storm began to come, I said, come on, storm. I fasted the more. And the more I fasted, the more challenges I was having. Even there, are, there were times I wouldn't be able to pray, but fasting, I must fast. Until one day. Everybody say one day. God will deliver you. I said God will deliver you. I said God will deliver you. There are some things that we have carried over. That we needed to live over. God opened my eyes. And spoke to me and I heard him clearly. To cut a long story short is a long story. I said to myself, if this is God, I'm going to put him to test. I decided not to fast for one, not just one week. Amen? Not just one month. I made up my mind. I want to pray for this one whole year and just trust the Lord. And just hold him by his word. And just keep my eyes focused on him. Just believe him and him alone with nothing else. With nothing else. I started from January 1st to December 31st of that year. By the time it was all over, I had my breakthrough. I had my breakthrough. By August of that year, God gave me a revelation. And I knew the yokes were broken. I called my wife and I said, Honey, the yokes have been broken. The yokes of our life will be broken. I said, the yokes of your life will be broken. Do I still fast? Yes, I do. But not the way I used to fast. The traditional fasting. The religious one. Just to show up. Just to make people know this is the way I live my life. I know of people that will always brag. 40 days they are on the mountain. Good for them. I have a father that will meet all my needs. I don't have to suffer before he meets my needs. I said I don't have to suffer before he meets my need. And even tonight, he will meet your need. I said tonight, he will meet your need. Just hold on to him by faith. By faith. And all these other kids, hold on to them by faith. Begin to use them by faith. Begin to unlock the doors of your life by faith. By faith. There is nobody that has ever received miracle that is not by faith. And the Lord will do it for you tonight in Jesus' name. Keys that unlock doors. Let us pray. Quietly look at your life. How is your Christian life, your relationship with God? How is your relationship with God? I want to deal with that now.
Examine yourself, examine your life. Examine yourself, examine your life. Examine yourself, examine your life. Sin is an abomination. Your position in the church is nothing before God. Title is nothing before God. For how long you have been in the church is nothing before God. It's nothing before God. It's nothing before God. You must be holy. You must be righteous. You must be pure. You must be upright. Come by faith. Come by faith. Come by faith. Come by faith. Believe all these things by faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. Please understand right now, I'm not saying pray about your headache. I'm not saying that you should pray about your sickness. I'm not saying you should pray about your enemy. Yes, you are praying about your enemy, but not the one you have in mind. You are praying about your number one enemy, sin. If you believe you can be free, you will be free. There is a key of the tongue. If you want the Lord to touch your tongue, it will be done. It will be done. Believe in God, believe in God, believe in God. You are the church of Jesus Christ. He wants to build you up. The church is a congregation of the called out people, people called out of sin. Just examine yourself. Many workers, many leaders cover sin with activity, with religion. In the sight of the Lord, everything shall be made open. Apply the key of repentance and get into the salvation of your life. You need to understand that whenever God erects a house of prayer, the devil always builds a chapel there. But the good thing is, the chapel of the devil shall be found. I want to pray tonight. Every chapel of the devil in my life be destroyed. Let there be divine examination of my life. And then let every installation of the devil be pulled down.
Father, make me to be a church ablaze, ablaze in holiness, ablaze in righteousness, ablaze in purity, ablaze in uprightness, ablaze in evangelism. Lord, make me to be on fire for thee. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. I will build my church. I will build my church. Lord, build me up. 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 You want to be restored? You want to be renewed? You want to be revived? Lord, build me up. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart today. Try me, O oh Lord, and know my thoughts, I pray. See if there be any wicked way in me. Tell the Lord to search you. Tell the Lord to search you. Tell the Lord to search you. It is nothing for God to work miracle. Where there is holiness, where there is righteousness, where there is faith. Where there is love and unity in the body. God prepare me a sanctuary. Pure and holy. Tried and true. Prepare me a sanctuary, O Lord. Make me your dwelling place. Make me your dwelling place, your place of abode. Your place of abode. Tell the Lord to help you. Tell the Lord to help you. Tell the Lord to help you. Now begin to claim those keys for yourself. The knowledge of who you are in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that if you have, if you have faith like the, like, 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 like the grain of mustard, nothing shall be impossible for you. Knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. You can move any mountain. You can cross any sea. If you know who you are in the Lord, if you know who you are in the Lord. You can get to the new page of your life. A new page. A new page. A new page, a new testimony. You believe the word of God by faith. You act on it by faith. You put it to work by faith. 
You obey the law by faith. Not a partial obedience. You love the Lord. You love the brethren. You live at peace with all men. You pray continually. You praise God for everything in your life. When things are convenient and when they are not convenient. Luke chapter 1, verse 37 says, With God nothing shall be impossible. Whatever you want the Lord to do for you right now. Begin to ask. Begin to ask. Begin to ask. Your hour has come. Your hour has come. Your hour has come. The miracle worker is here. Your hour has come. That marriage problem is over. Your hour has come. Rest upon your feet. Rest upon your feet. Your hour has come. Your hour has come. Your hour has come. God is passing through the camp. God is passing through the camp at this moment. Your hour has come. Your hour has come. That infirmity in your body is all over. Your hour has come. Rise upon your feet, rise upon your feet. Your hour has come, your hour has come. If you are expecting something from the Lord, your hour has come. It's not by noise, it's not by emotion. Your hour has come. Stretch your hand and begin to receive. Begin to receive. Your needs are different from another person's need. Receive, 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 receive. If you have something definite and in particular, Welcome your miracle. 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 Your turn around is here. Your turn around is here. That unforgiving spirit is gone in the name of Jesus. That fear is over in the name of Jesus. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Begin to bind right now. Whatever you lose on earth is losing heaven. Begin to lose right now. Son of man, son of man, speak unto this dry bone. I know you are expecting somebody to pray for you, but the power has been deposited in you right now. You can pray for yourself. You can get your miracle. You can get your deliverance. You can get your liberation. You can get your promotion. You can get your peace. Whatever you need from the Lord, the power is deposited. You can receive right now in the name of Jesus.
What is five blood? Where the name of the Lord Jesus is. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to help some people tonight. Please again, all eyes closed. All eyes closed. People feel more freer to open up to God when it is alone between them and their father. And the state of their life is nobody's business. It's between them and their God. And you are here this evening. And you want that key. And all the keys. To the blessings of your life. But you know also. That your Christian life is not the way it's supposed to be. You see that you are not born again at all. Or you are an unstable Christian. But you want to believe the Lord tonight for a turnaround. You want to believe the Lord for a miracle of salvation. For a miracle of stability. Wherever you are, if you just raise up that hand, I want to pray with you. If you just raise up that hand, I want to pray with you. God bless you. You want to, other people, I want to pray with you right now. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Forget about your position or your title. God bless you. Those of you raising up your hands, please lay those hands upon your chairs. Lay those hands upon your chairs. And quietly say after me. Don't even let your next door neighbor hear you. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for what you have done. Through your son, Jesus Christ, I bring myself unto you tonight. I submit and surrender my life unto you. I am sorry for all that I have ever done. Forgive me, O oh Lord. I reconsecrate myself unto you. I surrender my life unto you. Use me for your glory. Make me pure. Make me holy. Satan, I command you, in the name of my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ, pack your load. Get out of my life. Get out of my body. Get out of my emotion. In the name of Jesus, I receive the spirit of life. I, re I receive the spirit of holiness. I receive the spirit of purity. I receive the spirit of uprightness. From now on, the doors of my life are open. The doors of my blessings are open. The doors of my peace are open. The doors of my joy are open. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Now I want to pray with you. Father, I thank you for all the people that have raised up their hands indicating their surrenderedness unto you. Indicating their willingness and readiness for a new beginning. Indicating a complete and total turnaround. Lord, I pray tonight that you will visit them. You will touch them. Father, by your power, save them in Jesus' name. The nature of sin, I command, get out of their lives in Jesus' name. The grace to live in righteousness, 
in holiness, in purity, in steadfastness. Father, give them in Jesus' name. All that the enemy has done in their life, we will we, we, we reverse right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 For the rest of you, and those of you that just turn over your life unto Christ, if you have any need in your life, any situation in your life, you need the move of God, you need the touch of God, you need the power of God, you need the presence of the Lord, you need healing, you need deliverance, whatever it may be, just raise up your hand. Make sure you are raising up your hand on something specific, not just because everybody is raising up their hand. If you are not concerned about something specific, don't worry. Now, identify that miracle you need in your life. Because Jesus is here. And you remember, with us and Jesus, we can climb any mountain. We can cross any sea. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I present your children unto you, O Lord. I've given them your word. And I've made them to know, Lord, that if only they can believe in you and turn over their lives unto you, that there is nothing you cannot do. They have identified one need or the other in their lives. And we know, Lord, that you can do all things. I present them unto you. Whatever the problem may be, in the lives of all these hands that are raised up, or whatsoever family or individual the hands are representing, I pray that the miracle power of the living God will penetrate into their lives right now, into their body right now, into their situation right now, into their homes right now, into their children right now, into their employment right now, in Jesus' name. Whatsoever the devil has done, I come against you, Satan. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree your works be destroyed in Jesus' name. Every band of wickedness I command be loose in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, oh God, I command infirmities come out of their body in Jesus' name. Stagnation, stagnation, get out in Jesus' name. Baroness, you cannot stay. We are the name of the Lord Jesus is being mentioned by faith. I command you, spirit of baroness, come out in Jesus' name. Instability, I command, come out in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray concerning the crisis in the home, in the family. I command right now, the spirit of the living God will get into that family. And Christ Jesus will be in the very center of that marriage in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, those looking for promotion, those looking for employment, those looking for admission, those looking for academic success, whatsoever the need may be, in every life represented here tonight, raising up their hands, oh Lord, oh God, oh, satisfy them, satisfy them, satisfy them, surprise them, surprise them, surprise them, give them their miracle, give them their miracle, give them their miracle. Thank you, Father, for answering. In Jesus' name we pray.